Learning Outcome 311. Determine the response of a periodic signal to a system described by a linear constant coefficient differential equation. Since the beginning of this course, we've been talking about having a system where the input is x of t, our system is described by h of t, and our output is y of t. Starting at the beginning of this chapter with learning outcome 3.1, we introduced how if the input was a signal that was a complex exponential, the output would be that same complex exponential scaled by an h, which is a function of the frequency in that complex exponential. Through the property of linearity, the scalability property of linearity, we can scale that complex exponential by some constant, and the output will be scaled too. We can scale another complex exponential by a different constant, and that output will be also scaled by a different constant. And we can apply the additivity property of linearity, and we can add those two signals together on the input, and we'll add these two responses on the output. Taking that to a larger set of complex exponentials, we can add an infinite number of those complex exponentials, each with a different scale factor, using the letters a sub k from our Fourier series synthesis equation, which we talked about in learning outcome 3.2, and using these a sub k's instead of the capital A and capital B from the previous screen. The output, through the same reasoning on the previous screen, will be that same complex exponential, each one scaled by an h of j k omega naught, and then by linearity, the scalability property, we have our a sub k's coming over from our input, and we have the summation coming over from our input. Learning outcome 3.4 introduces methods of calculating these a sub k if we have a trigonometric signal. And learning outcome 3.6 introduces how to calculate these a sub k if we have any other signal that's not a pure sinusoid. This learning outcome uses a lot of other learning outcomes as prerequisites. It brings everything all together. Review those other learning outcomes if they're not fresh in your memory. We can take this output and we can combine the a sub k and the h of j k omega terms and call it a b sub k, because they're both dependent on k. b sub k is just another name, and that b sub k is the product of a sub k and h of j k omega zero. We're going to use that a lot in this learning outcome. Let's work on an example. Take x of t as cosine of 3t, a relatively simple periodic signal. We can use Euler's expansion and write it as sum of complex exponentials. That's learning outcome 3, 4. We can take a differential equation, a linear constant coefficient differential equation, and we can determine what our h of j omega is. This was in learning outcome 310 video. This particular differential equation, which gave this particular h of j omega. Review that video if you're not sure how to get this h of j omega from this differential equation. This h of j omega, if we evaluate it at the frequency of this complex exponential, evaluates as described here. We substitute the value of omega in, omega is 3, work out the algebra, simplifies out, and then probably using your calculator, you come up with this value here. We always want to write these things in polar form, using the exponential notation. And remember to use radians for the angle. At the negative 3, we substitute the negative 3 in, very similar, and through a similar set of algebra, we'll come up with a similar answer. Our output is going to be our input scale factors. Every one of our complex exponentials is going to be the same complex exponential, but with that h of j omega. We're going to have one for each term. Those h of j omegas, remember we ought to write them in complex exponential form. So we're going to plug those values in. We can do some algebra to combine these exponentials. 
and more algebra to combine the coefficients out front. And then taking this pair of complex exponentials, we can use Euler's formula and put them back into the form of a cosine. There was a lot of writing on those previous slide. Let's see if we can simplify things a little. We've got that original input, which we use learning outcome 3, 4 to come up with an Euler expansion and our Fourier series coefficients. Make sure we know what our fundamental frequency is. We take our differential equation and with learning outcome 310, come up with an h and j omega. To organize all that work on the previous slide, let's build a table. I really encourage you to do this. It organizes your work, and hopefully in addition to organizing your work, will organize your thoughts. The k values which we have in our x of t are 1 and negative 1. Our a sub k values are 1 half for both k is 1 and k is negative 1. This column is always through learning outcome 3, 4. Our omega values are k times omega naught. We know our k values from the first column. We calculated omega naught using learning outcome 3, 3, and usually it's listed in that same first step. We can calculate our h j omega values for each of these omega values, and remember to put it into polar form with our exponents as radians. That's just substituting these omega values into our h j omega. We can calculate our b sub k values. That comes from the product of a sub k and h j k omega naught. Remember, we're going to multiply the magnitudes, and we're going to add the angles. In this case, the 1 half had no angle, but we'll see that in further examples. We then use our synthesis equation for the output, where we call our coefficients b sub k. We can write things out as a sum of complex exponentials, do algebra to combine the exponents, and again, use Euler's formula to turn it back into a cosine with learning outcome 3, 5. There's still a lot of writing on this slide, but hopefully things are a little bit clearer now. If this is the first time you're watching the video, it might still not be clear. And I hope you're not just watching the video as if it were a Saturday night comedy on television, but that you're actually writing these steps down on a piece of paper in your notebook. And think about, as you write those steps, what they mean, where they came from, how you get each one of them. Remember, you can pause this video and write the steps out. You can rewind this video and play them over and over again. Hopefully, you don't need to play it very many times, but you have that option, and these videos are not designed to be watched a single time. You should watch them and repeat them until you understand each concept, and not move on until you do. Let's take that previous example and just look at the answer for a minute. That answer relative to how it began. Our original signal when we began was a sinusoid with some scale factor out front and some phase inside. This particular example had a scale factor of 1 and a phase of 0. We're always going to wind up when we work with this b sub k is a sub k h j k omega 0 with our a scale factor from our input scaled by the magnitude of our h and j omega that we get for that pair of frequencies. It's going to be the same for both positive and negative k. We're going to have that same trig function. We're going to have the same frequency that we started off with. And then the phase from our original input is then going to be added to by the phase of our h and j at the positive omega. This is a simplification that will always happen. Use this in future courses and use it here to check your work. But I want to see all the work that we did in the previous two slides on anything you submit in this course for this sort of problem. But this is a nice, nice conclusion that comes from those methods. Hopefully by doing several of those examples, the reason that this exists will become clearer. Again, I want to see all that work in anything you submit. This is always a case of multiplying magnitudes and adding angles. 
Let's try another example. This was the example from the video for Learning Outcome 3.4, and this example was also used in Learning Outcome 3.8. You've seen this before. This differential equation we had on the previous slides in the first example, and this differential equation again was in Learning Outcome 3.10 video. We come up with an h j omega as written here. We're going to create that same table, always these five columns. From the learning outcome 3-4 video, we know that our fundamental frequency is 2, and that we have our Fourier series coefficients listed here. We can now start populating that table. The first two Fourier series coefficients are for k is 1 and negative 1, and then we have 2 and negative 2, and finally we have 0. The a sub k values that go with them are 1 half and 1 half, minus 3j over 2 and positive 3j over 2. I took these nasty j's and rationalized these terms. It's a lot simpler that way, a lot cleaner. Please rationalize all your complex terms. And then we have an a sub k is negative 5 when k is 0. Next, we calculate all our omega values. We know our omega naught is 2. We just take the product of our k and our omega naught value and we get all these different omega values. Next, we take each of these omega values, substitute them into our h and j omega, probably type it into your calculator, and we come up with an h and j omega value for each one of these omega values, and we put that into polar form, again with our exponents in radians. We calculate our b sub k, as the product of our a sub k and our h j k omega 0, the second column and the fourth column. We can then use these b sub k's and our synthesis equation to write out our y of k as a sum of complex exponentials. We take each of those terms in pairs using learning outcome 3, 5, and we write things in terms of sines or cosines. If we've written all of our h's and a's in polar form, therefore our b's in polar form, we're going to wind up with a cosine even if we started with a sine. We like to write things in cosines. Again, there's a lot of work here. Work the steps out. See where each thing in the table came from and that you can make each of these calculations, particularly this h and j omega. Figure out how your calculator works and that you can get those same numbers yourself.